now I'm grateful and know that it happened for me, uh, like Matt said, not to me. And, and that, the affair, I'm so grateful that, uh, that that affair happened because I'm the husband that I am today because of it. I'm the father that I am today because of it. And I know I wouldn't be half the father and half the husband had I not gone through that and realized in the areas that I needed to step it up uh, in my life. Uh, the business failure, I'm the business person I am today because of that happening. Um, and so I, yeah, I'm extremely grateful for having gone through that pain. And so for the people watching this, the people that are listening, to know that we talk about patience, we talk about you know, all these things, but like it can happen quickly. Like when you make that decision to, to change and you make that decision and take ownership of your life, like it can happen quickly. It may not be overnight, but in a matter of a few months and in a matter of a few years, your life can be radically different. You saw the daily bread, here's the new recipe. You can't expect to see more transparency. 5,006 figure earners is success to me. Giving the best of me, my living legacy. What's going on guys? Thanks for tuning in to The Modern Man. This is a show where we explore and we discuss some of the obstacles and the challenges that men encounter on a daily basis in today's society. Through the conversation, we hope to build better men, better fathers, and better husbands to ultimately build a better world. For today's topic, we're gonna to explore some of our darkest days. Allow me to introduce the panel, the usual suspects, Tyler Harris here, and of course, Charles Russ in the building. Carl. and What's Carl. Up? What's up, y'all? Yeah. <laughs> uh, very special guest today, Matt Snipes. Uh, What's going thanks on, Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, thanks for being on the show. Uh, today's topic is gonna be a little different. We wanna pull back the curtain a little bit and talk about some of our darkest days. Might require some vulnerability a little bit here and there, but before we dive into that and really kind of get into the darkness, uh, Matt, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, let people know who you are and what it is you do. Yeah, yeah. my name is Matt Snipes. Um, I host a podcast called The Self-Made Podcast where I, uh, I just try to encourage people to be the best version of themselves. And that's kind of how I met all the guys I'm sitting here with is I feel like they're the best version in, in their respective fields. So I try to surround myself with them and, and the information that I share is not my own. I'm, I'm honestly not that smart. I just pick up from guys like this and share it with my audience. And I think we all kind of try and surround ourselves and we have our starting five constant switching up the roster to grow. So we, uh, I actually hold you as one of those people that I learned from too. So uh, glad to have you here. Um, jumping into the topic of the darkest days. I think it's easy to watch this program, see some of the accomplishments, the success that we're currently enjoying as big or as little as it might be and think for anyone watching, how can I relate? And there's always a starting point. So to, to kind of get things going with some of my darkest days, I think I'll go first and share my story sure. in terms of, for me, um, I describe this as this, and what are some of the things you've accomplished in your life or you've overcome in your life that when you look back, it gives you confidence to overcome things in the future, whatever life throws at you. For me, giving everybody a quick backstory, when I graduated, I worked at a law firm and it was just not for me. I wasn't made for a cubicle and I, I wouldn't say full on depression, but I was just in a bad spot. My routine would be work, get out of work, go to McDonald's, get a 20 piece chicken nuggets, large fry, large sweet tea, go home, chow that thing down and lie in bed. My parents are home, they cooked, but I didn't want to eat that. So my health wasn't good and eventually had stomach problems got diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. For those of you that don't know what it is, it's similar to Crohn's. I'll spare everybody the, the nasty details. Just know that I had things, I had blood coming out of both ends. Hmm. That was the result of my large intestine no longer absorbing nutrients, ended up putting me in the hospital. I'm in the hospital for two weeks. I lost 30 pounds in one month. Wow. Surgeon comes in, wants to give me a CAT scan. He says, there, I'm on morphine, I'm on pregnizone, which is a steroid, to try and fight the inflammation in my large intestine. They said, listen, man, it's been over a week. Pregnizone's not working. We're not fighting it. We're going to do a CAT scan. If we don't like what we see, we're taking you to Mount Sinai in New York, and we're taking your large intestine out. Jeez. I'm 23 years old, man, and I'm like, okay. At the time, looking back, the pain was so bad. I literally looked at my mom. I looked at my dad, who's crying for the second time I've ever seen in my life. And I said, 
take that bad boy out. Mm -hmm. My large intestine hurt me that much, I wanted it out. Thankfully, uh, CAT scan came back, I was fighting it, I came back, got out of the hospital, but that was a switch for me where I kind of decided um, I didn't want my stress and my environment to dictate my health anymore. A lot of what they said in the hospital was, were you stressed out at work? Because that can give you an onset for this. And are you, are you taking care of your health? What are you eating? So all that kind of came together as a perfect storm. So when I got out of the hospital, I knew I had to make a change. And my change was kind of really cutting out the BS. Stopped accepting things that I wasn't really happy about. And what I ended up doing was kind of ended a relationship that wasn't good for me, moved out of my parents' house, started applying and really kind of taking responsibility for myself. And almost a year to the day after I got out of the hospital, I was accepting what would be uh, a dream job in Saginaw, Michigan as a meteorologist, which continued to put me on the tra trajectory of where we are now. So I share that story just because every day I wake up, I take four blue pills for my stomach it's an everyday thing, I gotta fill the prescription and I'm gonna have it for the rest of my life. And if my stomach acts up a little bit, that's always a little bit of a scary thing, yeah. but I don't let that dictate my day to day because my positivity kind of just keeps me pushing forward. So that's my story, guys. Man, so go, go back to, there was two, there's two separate things there. You had the working in the cubicle, mm -hmm just not happy where you were in life and you had the medical issue mm -hmm. and the medical issue happened during that same time or yeah. kind of right after you realized that, that you were in that, that bad, that bad place. So it's like two completely separate issues that all came to a head mm -hmm. at one time, which is interesting. And so what was it that ultimately was it, if the medical issue had never happened, do you think you would have had the transition in your professional life as well? I've never been asked that before, and honestly, when I think about it, I don't think so. Hmm. If it wasn't for the medical issue, I don't think I would have gotten to that breaking At point. That moment. Because I, it, was a, it was a position where I blamed everything else around me. I'll be, I'll be honest with you guys. I blamed me not getting a job on me being black. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I can't get a job, and I'm applying left and right, and I can't get experience, and how can I get a job and get exper if I don't have experience? How can I get experience if they don't give me a job? Mm -hmm. And I really kind of was lashing out on everything and kind of just being in that hospital bed with all this stuff happening to me, and literally the doctor's like, are you stressed? What are you eating? There was nobody I could blame for eating 20, <laughs> 20 right. piece chicken nuggets right. every day other than Mommy myself. Dog. That was like the mirror I needed where it's like, well, man, you haven't really been taking care of your yeah. stomach. Sorry, doc. So there's a lot. You said a lot there. I mean, there's some some good points. Uh, even even a health scare. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing like now you have and one thing I'm big on is habits and reminders. Mm -hmm. So even if it was a placebo, there's four blue pills every morning. You literally have a reminder hmm. every day. Hmm. Hey, Ted, keep your together. Yeah. Let's go. You know, you, it, it's like it's a reminder. And, and we don't need to always forget uh, things that happened that were bad. Yeah. We shouldn't forget them. They hmm. should be lessons learned. We shouldn't, oh, wallow in pity, of course. No, I don't think any of us is like that. But you don't forget. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know a lot of people that, are, that they get into that mindset, I'm just going to forget that ever happened. No, you're not, you're not really supposed to forget, but it, it's supposed to be a Use lesson. It. It's Use supposed it. to be a guide. It's supposed to be a, a reminder. And, and those four blue, it's crazy, four blue pills, uh, you know, it's like the Matrix. You got, you got <laughs> this, Ted, this Ted's little Matrix. Um, and then, too, uh, one thing, too, is in, I think a lot of people have gotten into this comfort mindset. Uh, you don't know something's wrong until it actually hurts. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think we all have a story of we thought everything's perfect. Uh, Maddie, I know you did a, a, a lot, you do a lot of health stuff on your podcast. Cairo is a big one for me because it's like you don't, because I've had an experience with chiropractic stuff and I didn't know anything was wrong. I thought it was perfect mm -hmm. until I found out it wasn't, you know, so and that's and that drives change. That level of comfort, getting into a discomfort zone because you figure out that it's not right, drove a change for you. Yeah. You know, if that never would have happened, what would you be doing right now? Hmm. You'd probably be pissed off in a cubicle, mm -hmm. maybe making more money, maybe not. 
Maybe you would have said, well, I've been doing law, I'm gonna get a law degree and be a lawyer, which sounds great, unless mm -hmm. you hate it. That was also presented on the table. Mm -hmm. So think, just think about, you know, when, when we start talking about these darker days and these bad, these horrible things that happen, a lot of times, weirdly on the end, I look back at my bad moments, I'm like, was it really that bad? Mm -hmm. Or was it a necessity? Well, it's just, you, you, it's gratitude for it. Like, I'm sure you're grateful for that now. Oh, yeah. And, and that's the most encouraging thing that people can get from watching this, listening to this, is that more than likely it'll be congruent in all of our stories is that the pain that we went through, we're now grateful because it turned us into who we are. It, it gave us that catalyst. It gave us that spark. It gave us that, that fork in the road where we could choose to stay with what we were doing. And, and, and that for you was a bad place health-wise, mm -hmm. but it was a catalyst for you to change the rest of your life as well. And so for people that are watching, that are, that are in it right now, that are, that are in the middle of a struggle, that are in the middle of that pain, or in the middle of that place where they don't feel like they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, for them to understand that, man, one day I'm going to look back just as Ted looks back on that horrible situation with gratitude mm -hmm. because of what happened next. Um, I've, I would find an, an insane amount of uh, encouragement in that to know that if I can just push through this, chances are there's a blessing on the other side that I'm, that I'm about to receive and I'm gonna be able to be just like these guys talking about it one day and talking about it in a, in a positive light. As crazy as it is, and I think the switch was literally on the hospital bed. And when you're in the hospital, they come in every morning, they prick you to take blood. Every night they prick you to take blood. And I ran out of veins, now they're taking it out of my hand. And I remember sitting there in pain and thinking to myself, and I got the IV, and this is right around December, so I'm the only dude with ornaments hanging from my IV because I wanted a Christmas tree. <laughs> but I'm thinking to myself, if I overcome this, I'll be great. I'll be okay. And those four, four blue pills every single day when I take them, it's not a woe is me, it's not this, the other thing, it's like, Let's go, baby. Mm -hmm. I went from having to take one at a time to I pop all four, <laughs> take a little water, drink, and just keep it moving because this is the hustle. This is the day. It don't stop me. It's part of me, and I'm proud of it. Yeah, no matter how dark something you're going through could be, there will come a time where it will change from why is this happening to me to why did this happen for me. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's the reason we're all sitting here now is, you know, we, that mindset, that, that click happened, that this happened for us, not to us. We're not a victim. You know, this was to show us something bigger, you know, mm -hmm. and something to learn from, be appreciative, you know, and that's, uh, so I'll go ahead and share my story. Um, I, I made a big list of things. What do I want to share? And uh, some of them were more impactful, but then I thought about the guys that I'm going to be sitting here with. And what do we have in common? And that's that we're all really big into physical things. You know, we all work out. We all take a lot of pride in our physique. I mean, there's nothing wrong with saying that. You know, we like to look good. Um, and I feel like we're all on a pretty elite level. You know what I mean? In, in our respective fields. Um, so recently, I, uh, I got hurt in the gym. So, as, as you mentioned, the, uh, the chiropractor, I thought that I had just done something wrong doing a deadlift. Come to find out, it was our buddy, Jake Tubbs, that kicked me in my head when we were doing some MMA training <laughs> that, that our chiropractor... Note, note to everyone, <laughs> don't spar with Jake. If you haven't seen the video, it's pretty, it's a pretty uh, legit, full yeah. on, heavyweight leg yep. kick to the yep. dome. Yep, exactly. <laughs> So, um, having gone to the chiropractor, I found out that that's what set things off and it was just a ticking time bomb and what I was doing at that time didn't matter. It was, it was just going to happen. But that put me down for the count to the point where I can't put my shoes on by myself. I couldn't walk out to the car. I couldn't drive the car. Um, I could barely get out of bed. I was literally hunched over, you know, to walk to the bathroom, took a lot of effort. And that set me back a lot because a lot of my identity is what I'm able to do physically. You know, not only is that my main source of income, you know, is, is physical labor, but, you know, going to the gym, that, that puts me in the headspace to be able to do my podcast. And that's my biggest passion. So without being able to get that physical, you know, exertion, my mind is just going to dark places. You know, I'd kind of just 
it had been two or three weeks and I just given up. I'm like, well, you know, I'm not really interested in the gym, even if I do get better. Don't mm. care. Didn't oh. want to record a podcast because I wasn't in a good space mentally. I was like, I don't want to project this onto my listeners. Nothing good will come out of that. So it really, really made me appreciate what I had before that because before it was just natural. You know, it was mm. just, this is what I do. You mm. know, it's, and I'm around people that do the same thing. So it really made me appreciate people that can't do what I'm able to do now. And fortunately, I'm on the way up, I'm on the mend, that some people aren't. So it really made me grateful that I'm able to do the things I'm able to do with my body. What helped you to start digging out of that hole? I think it was just knowing that what, what's wrong with me is, is gonna heal itself. You know, I, I went to the doctor and, and got checked out and stuff, and they said, just give it a little time. You know, um, so just knowing that it was going to get better, you know, that was that was a big thing. Um, but it's also made me change my focus on, you know, everything I do. You know, I'm, I'm now grateful to go outside and throw the ball at the dog just because I'm like, what if I couldn't do this? Mm-hmm. You know, because I couldn't when I was hurt. You know, I couldn't throw a ball. I couldn't lift my arm up over all because of a back injury. Yeah. Sounds like that gratitude, you know, um, with a situation that anybody's going through, your gratitude for what you can do Mm -hmm. is what can kind of push you forward because, you know, we've all heard the quote, you know, I was mad because I didn't have no shoes and then I met a man that didn't have Mm -hmm. any feet. It's easy to kind of think, woe is me, why am I going through this? But the reality of it is, regardless of what you're going through, as 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 bad as it is, you know, it can get better. There's, as long as there's still life in you, Mm-hmm. It can get better and you have the opportunity to make it better and also being thankful for where you are compared to where you can be is, is, is always a good motivator in terms of pushing forward and kind of taking the grasp of your current situation, making it your own and making it better, yep. not waiting for it to become better. Mm-hmm. You may say no, this will ruin my hypothesis, but, but um, sometimes, sometimes I found that you have to get sat, sat down, down for a minute like you got sat down for a minute oh yeah mm-hmm. to figure out kind of what's next and so did you have any time during that period where you couldn't just go do the things that you're normally doing where you had time to finally think and maybe think even a little more clearly because you didn't have the distractions of the daily stuff you were always doing a hundred percent um it's even uh you know it gave me time to outline some goals that i've got for myself and it kind of changed my path for where i thought i was going to go this year yeah. and i'm going in a completely different direction only because i had the time to sit there alone sure. with my thoughts and decide you know hey i could i could do this if i apply myself mm-hmm. so you know, get out of that comfort zone. And so again, in that situation, you would have never sat down and done that had you not been forced to. Never. <laughs> nope. Nope. I don't, I don't think I would have. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, I mean, I'm that's... glad you said yes. Yes. Yes, cool, uh, Charles. You gotta... <laughs> yeah, uh, well, man, that, that deload process, uh, it's like you take a deload week sometimes in the gym. Like, I, I'm taking one next week back. Like, my knees are starting to hurt, my uh, elbows are starting to hurt. I've been gung-ho, went back and doing full body workouts with cardio and a lot of pounding. <laughs> mm-hmm. and next, next week I need a deload. So mm-hmm. 100% understand. Uh, but the, the gratitude portion is a life changer. And it can come from something as, as simple as what just happened. Uh, you know, I, one thing is, you know, uh, Tyler and I both have kids, uh, you guys, some point it will probably happen, I would think, um, just knowing the kind of guys you are. Um, one thing that I really try and teach my kids is gratitude. Like even from, especially from an athletic standpoint, boy, you didn't do anything to be fast, to be strong, to be agile. You don't even train, like you, you're not there. So why should you be conceited or over, or, or over, chest out pound you should always be confident i'm not talking about confidence but it's that this was a free gift you should appreciate it not be conceited about it or be cocky about it and that's what happens when little stuff i feel like gets taken away like when you know the first time i got hurt wrestling in college i literally was lateral raising a five pound dumbbell and i was like oh and it wouldn't go up and i was like wait time out what what's going on 
you know, and, and it, it's that appreciation of, you know, it's, it's knowing that you're, you're, and in this case, it's, it's physical gifts. You're physically gifted as a person compared to other people. Everybody can't do what you do, and it has nothing to do with their, their thought process, their work ethic, or anything. It's just not going to happen. So I appreciate that. Uh, and that also bleeds over into mental. Believe it or not, everybody is not as what we would literally term as smart. Everybody's just not, it's, it's just not there. I appreciate that. And I feel like that gift of appreciation, though, drives motivation. So if I've been given this and I didn't do anything for it, I need to, I need to use it. I need to use it for the benefit of myself, for other people, the world. I need to use it as, as much as I can. Um, and I feel like that, that path of, of gr gratuity, um, which you even do with your podcast, you know, it's, it's that sharing. It's like, I'm going to go get you some answers because there's somebody you're listening. I'm going to go get you some answers because I love that you bring to the table answers. You bring to the table fitness answers, health answers, mental health answers, solutions. That's that's huge. Um, but I think you only find that that the path to to helping others is actually through gratitude for what you have. Oh, it's on me, huh? Ah, uh, well, uh, Ted, well, we've had this conversation a couple times, man. I'm, I, I've been a blessed person my whole life, and a lot of that's my perspective. Um, it's being taken care of, man, I, I've been very blessed. So, uh, you know, I, I don't hide that I'm a religious person. You know, I would never hide it. So uh, when I came back from Germany, I'd been in a relationship with a young lady for nine years, and it just, didn't work out. I'll even tell you full out. The way I was at the start of a relationship, I wasn't a good boyfriend. Um, but we worked through it and we tried to grow. And then when it come time, it came to the point where my kids were getting older, they said to me, hey, Dad, uh, why don't you just live here? Because I was, I mean, I was coming back every other month for a couple of weeks. It was, I thought it was great, right? It fit with everybody. And one of them just said to me, hey, Dad, you know, if you were here, you'd come to all the games, you wouldn't miss any games. Blah, blah. And I was like, man, it, it, it's time to go back. She had her business in Germany. She has her family there, and we just couldn't make it work. So, you know, I, I'm coming back, and I get back, and I link up with my uh, high school girlfriend. And she had previously had breast cancer, uh, and she was in full remission. We thought it was good. It was gone. I mean, I went to the doctor with her at Duke. It's gone. It's good, man. We think, oh, yeah, this is it. This is, we're going to make this happen. Man, a couple months later, it's back. I mean, it's back, back. I mean, it, you know, and over the next six, seven, eight months, it, she went downhill fast uh, and she passed away. I went through a point where I was literally, literally angry at God. I was like, why would you do this to me? Like, I just figured out how to be a decent boyfriend in Germany and you took me away from that. I just got my crap together there. You take me that and you put me in this relationship and then you do this to me? Like, why? I started, I was drinking heavy. I was partying. It was when I first moved back. I mean, I was partying, dude. I mean, it was <laughs> probably, I would say, Wednesday through middle of the day Monday. The following week is when I would get my crap all the way back together. You know, it, it was, I, I was on it. And I woke up one morning and I said, dude, what the hell is wrong with you? Just get it together. And it wasn't, I, I wish I had some, some fleeting moment, but I wasn't doing well at work. You know, my... My fitness, I wasn't as, in as good a shape as I normally am. I was missing appointments, I uh, just wasn't there. But one thing that occurred to me, you know, because I, I was missing su Sundays, I wouldn't go to church, I was missing Sundays at church. One thing that occurred to me, started going back to church, uh, more consistent, um, was that nobody did anything to me. Nothing happened to me. The situation was that I was there you have to be a vessel. We all hear that. If you go to church, you've heard it. You got to be a vessel. You got to be willing to be used to, to, as a tool to help other people. So there are situations that when I think back, it's like, OK, well, if I wouldn't have been there, she couldn't have had her kids. Or when they had to, when we had to move, me and my brother and her parents moved, loaded all of her stuff and moved it. Uh, you know, I took her to Duke and I stayed with her because her parents had to work. So we rotate. I was part of all that for her so that her days her last days could be as good as possible. It wasn't for me. It had nothing, it had nothing to do with anything being done to me. And it was literally a snap thought that was like, dude, 
it wasn't to you. Um, and I got lucky, if you've ever never been to the Cancer Survivors Park, that story is in there because they wanted people who have had experience with cancer, different experiences, and they wanted my experience. So it's on one of the boards um, in the Cancer Survivors Park. And, and I learned from that point on, which literally feeds into what we've been talking about, a lot of things we talk about in Modern Man is doing stuff for others. I literally got mad at God because he had me do something for someone else. It had nothing to do with me. It wasn't for me, and, it, and actually, excuse me, it was, it was a lot, it was for me to learn a lesson as well. So not only was I privileged to help someone else who's a great person, I got to learn a lesson, a huge lesson. And I, I had, you know, I didn't really, you know, I wasn't, I'm not a big emotional person, it's not my thing. One day in the car, I'm in the car, I'm riding home, and I just like, I had a little breakdown, I'm just crying. Literally for no reason. And I realized like, Dude, you just, you learn. Now it's time for you to take what you've learned and, and share it. I think in a conversation you and I had had, you had talked about talking to her mom and getting a really understanding of how much it meant for you to be there yeah. during that time. Yeah, first time we so, sat down and had lunch. So how long, how, how much time passed from, from her passing to you realizing how much of an impact it had to where you had that realization of like, oh, now I get it. I wasn't going through that for me. It was going through that for her. Somewhere between a year and a year and a half, just being okay. honest. Like when it really clicked in. Uh, yeah. It was a few was that months the, after Was that the we first met. time you feel like in your life that you, even though weren't necessarily realizing it at the time, but you were like truly like selfless in that period of time? Hundred percent. Yeah. Self to be selfless. Yeah. Hundred percent. Like it was, it was not doing. It had nothing to do with me. Like mm -hmm. that's the thing. At the end of the day, it had nothing to do with me. If if she needed me to sit there because she wanted to have her kids, yeah. she wasn't feeling well. I you sit there. You know, if if she needed me to go get something, I go get it. And you know, and I've been blessed since, and I have a great relationship now. Great, great relationship now. You know, but it all led to that, mm -hmm. you know, it all, me having a good relationship is part of something that I learned here. Uh, me having, to, me being able to do the things with people, finding my passion for doing something for other people came from that. Yeah. And I see it now, you know, now when you look back, it's like as you get older and, and, and you, you learn, look back, mm -hmm. look at experiences because you'll see them through a different lens and you'll, you'll understand why things happen. Because I do feel like there, there are reasons. You don't change if everything's perfect. You just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. So sometimes you need some pressure. You need a little pain. You need a little pain to bend that pipe. And see, that's a story I didn't know about you. But since I've known you, you know, every time I'm around you, you're always helping someone else, figuring out a way to help someone else. You know, you're always doing for others. Is that the event that kind of set that wheel in motion for you? Or? Yep. 100%. Like, so it's funny that, that it's the darkest days, but that's one of my like b brightest, to use the word beacons. That's like one of my little beacons. It's like, don't ever forget, like, you're supposed to do for others, especially when given that opportunity. And I mean, no, I don't, I don't run around trying to interject into everyone's business. But when you see that, that someone needs you and you can help them and you, you can push them through or you can get them over the hump, or just help them maintain when they can't do it themselves. It's, it's like one of the most, that, that and it, it's internally gratifying, very. If you think about even taking it to another level of perspective on her, like imagine her last days that she was able to give you that. Yeah, she let me And, and all the people that you've helped since was as a direct result of her being willing to allow you to help yeah. because not a lot of people get in those situations they're like i don't i don't want anybody's help yeah i want to go through this by myself like i don't want anybody around but her willingness to let you be a part of that which at the time was incredibly difficult but now it's because of something that she did that enabled you to have that selfless moment for the first time which enabled you to have all the power now to help all these other people and the willingness to help all these other people. It's unbelievable. 
incredible. Yeah, it's a new new perspective. That literally just another moment. Like, mm-hmm. she let me be a part of that. Tyler, what about you? Yeah, so growing up, um, I had a great, like, kind of like you said, I was, I was blessed. I had a great family, great upbringing. I uh, went to school, graduated, became a financial advisor, and man, I thought I was the, the king of the world. <laughs> I was making good money right out of school. We made it. <laughs> yeah, like, I was just, but, you know, it's funny. I was telling somebody just the other day that I, I can remember some conversations that I'd had with my dad and, about, like, bad things happen. And, and I kind of had started having this like fear of like, it can't, I can't, ha- like it can't be good forever. Like what's it gonna be? Like when's the shoe gonna drop? Um, it's funny, I just had some realizations of those conversations here recently, but, um, but it did drop and it dropped in a bad way. Life happened, um, crazy situation, um, took my business away from me that was you know, completely out of my control. Um, a couple weeks or a couple months after that, uh, found out that my wife, um, who we had been dating all through all through college, and I got married right after school, had been having an affair for a long time, and uh, went through that process of me trying to make it work, um, and going through counseling, and her still being with him, and uh, finally, ultimately, culminating in in us getting a divorce, which was very very difficult. Uh, we had separated. My my family didn't live here in town, so when we separated, she went and lived with her family in town and had this support system, and I was alone uh, by myself in, in my house. And um, and even went through a period of time where I didn't tell my parents about it that the, that that the affair and that that I was going through all this because I didn't want them to worry. You know, I didn't want them to. My mom worries anyways, and so I didn't want it to be one more thing since they weren't here that they would be worrying about me and. Um, so went through a lot of stuff alone um, for the first time and uh, started drinking a lot, you know, just like kind of with your story. I, I was drinking all the time, um, just trying to numb the pain, really. I mean, just had, having, had, having not had gone through uh, a lot of pain before in my life, I didn't really know how to handle it, quite frankly. Um, so drinking a lot, which just led to further problems. Um, I found my now wife, uh, we met each other and, you know, something I hadn't talked about a whole lot is I was still lost. Like we found each other and, and, you know, we were dating and, and things were getting pretty serious, but like, I still had no idea what I was going to do professionally. Um, was still drinking too much. I ended up going to Ohio to help a friend launch a business up there. I was up there for about six or seven months and really just like hit the peak of my drinking and just being an idiot, like just partying all the time. Uh, but it's funny, when I was in Ohio, I was renting out this room inside a basement. It was like in, the, in an, an interior room inside of a basement. So it was like, <laughs> like no windows. And it was like the first time I'd ever found myself like truly, truly alone. You know, I'd been, you know, raised in a good family, went to college, lived in a fraternity house with like 10 other guys. And as soon as I graduated, went right into, I got married. So I was with my wife. Like I'd never been alone, ever. Like never been alone. Um, And there were some moments in that basement where I felt like God had purposely put me there and said, hey, I needed some stuff to happen in your life so I could finally get you alone so you could finally cut out the noise and, and finally hear me. Like you could finally get to a place where we could actually talk and get to know each other. And there were some of the most transformative um, nights of my life in that basement of that guy's house that I was living with. Um, just reading the Bible and like having, like being in like deep prayer. Um, moved back to South Carolina, proposed to my wife, now wife. Uh, we got married, but I still was drinking too much. Still didn't have any idea of what I was doing uh, with my life. And some mentors came into my life at that time. And uh, you know, it's interesting when, when a unique situation, when you have a, a, a wife that has an affair and you're the man in the situation, it destroys your confidence, as you can imagine. Um, and my confidence was just beaten down. It was like at an all time low. And in that same time, around that same period, also having lost my business, I had these things that I had gone all in on and that had been taken away from me. And so a lot of the fear and a lot of this uncertainty and not knowing what to do with my life was this uncertainty to go all in again, 
that it would be taken from me. And so I would bounce around from sales job to sales job um, and I'd either quit or get fired because I wouldn't put the work in. And it was, it was just to be able to use that excuse like, oh yeah, that job, yeah, it didn't work out. Uh, I mean, if I would have tried, you know, I would have done well, but like, you know, I, w I wasn't really going all in, but you know, if I had, I would have crushed it. And like, you know, always use it as an excuse, but it was just a fear. It was just a fear of actually trying again and having something taken away from me. And so these mentors came into my life, um, these three guys, and um, really just breathed life back into me. Um, they gave me an opportunity uh, to, to work with them. And the type of work that it was was very fast paced and transactional, which is exactly what I needed to build my confidence back up. It was like, put in some work, get a reward. Put in some more work, get in more reward. And it just built that up. And they started really just, um, just spending time with me talking about like the self-development side and the mental side and about the law of attraction and about, you know, the fact that like I was exactly where I was supposed to be because of the decisions I had made in my life. And it was really in that moment that I finally took ownership and realized that everything was my fault. Um, and it's usually, a t uh, it's usually, um, interesting conversation amongst men when I talk about like, oh, you no man, you know, her having an affair, that wasn't your fault. I'm like, well, you know, if I had been the absolute best husband, created the best environment in our home, would that affair have happened? Possibly, but I'm thinking probably not. And so I wasn't a terrible husband, but I wasn't the best. And so I had to take ownership of that and like, and, and finally understand that like, that was my fault. And with the business, like, was that my fault? At the time, I, 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 put, I was placing the blame on everybody else. And realizing that the longer you, you point at everybody else, you give them the keys to your handcuffs. And that until you point your finger back at yourself and take blame for it is the only, only moment where you can actually do something about it. And so it went from this blame game, oh, my wife did this, oh, my, my employer, you know, this happened and, and oh yeah, this guy fired me and, and this opportunity didn't work out. And then finally just took responsibility for myself. And uh, that was the beginning of, you know, four and a half years ago of just this huge transformation in my life where when you talk about, and we talk often about like auditing your circle, but it was more for me auditing the things that I was allowing in from a macro scale. Like I quit watching TV quit listening to anything other than books, you know, audio books, podcasts, YouTube series, and just, just saturating myself in positive messages and just completely suffocating any negativity around me. Uh, all the people I used to hang out with don't hang out with anymore. Um, all the things I used to like, I just completely changed as a person. Uh, and over that process changed externally as well. Uh, but it started internally for me. Like I, I had to change myself. I had to become a different person in order to kind of take it to the next level. And, um, and it happened fast. Like that's, that, I think that's the biggest encouragement that I would like to give someone is that like, that was four and a half years ago. Um, I love that it was four and a half years ago because I can feel it. Like in this moment, I can feel what it felt like. And it was horrible terrible, a lot of pain, a lot of struggle, but that now I'm grateful and know that it happened for me, uh, like Matt said, not to me. And, and that, the affair, I'm so grateful that, that that affair happened because I'm the husband that I am today because of it. I'm the father that I am today because of it. And I know I wouldn't be half the father and half the husband had I not gone through that and realized in the areas that I needed to step it up uh, in my life. Uh, the business failure. I'm the business person I am today because of that happening. Um, and so I, yeah, I'm extremely grateful for having gone through that pain. And so for the people watching this, the people that are listening to know that we talk about patience, we talk about, you know, all these things, but like it can happen quickly. Like when you make that decision to, to change and you make that decision and take ownership of your life, like it can happen quickly. It may not be overnight. But in a matter of a few months and in a matter of a few years, your life can be radically different, radically different. And so to me, that's the biggest encouragement to someone that's listening to this that may be in that struggle or maybe in that feeling of like hopelessness of like, I just don't know what I'm supposed to be doing 
to know that they could look up a year from now and be in a radically different place. Uh, and for my life now, it's, I just, I, I want people to understand that. I want people to know that. And I want people to look at guys like us and, and say like, yeah, they're doing some cool stuff, but man, they're just like me. Like we, we have the ability to have messed up, failed, struggled in the exact same way, if not way worse than anybody watching this or listening to this. Uh, and we may in the future, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, but that as long as you take ownership of everything, then you can get yourself out of it because you're the one that got yourself into it. It's like a quote I heard uh, Bedros Koulian, he said, um, two or three decisions away from being broke, but I'll never be poor because of everything he's put into his mind, everything he's put into his life. And kind of the purpose of this episode, to your point, is, is pulling back that curtain and letting everybody, anybody listening, watching know, you know we are human. And we've had those dark days before. And I, just listening to all your stories, you look back and you're thankful for that. Another quote I heard was like, you will be, a sh you will, you will be shocked at how grateful you are that this is happening to you, regardless of what it is you're going through. With that being said, do you guys think your darkest days are behind you? And coupled with how are you preventing those dark days from coming back? Or how are you preparing yourself to get through the dark days? Because as you mentioned, Tyler, life happens. And as long as we're living, things can get better. But we are just a few bad decisions away from messing one or two things up. It's not, it's not even just bad, bad decisions. decisions. You can make every right decision and bad things can happen. That's just life. Um, but I think you can get to a place where you build the strength in your mind to where when the bad things do happen that they don't knock you down as long. Like that's my focus. Like I know I'll get knocked down again. Like I, I know it because I'm trying to do some incredibly great things. And no one, no one gets to the extraordinary levels without getting knocked down multiple times. But it's building yourself and, and, and through discipline of the daily things that you're doing to build that mental fortitude that when you get knocked down, maybe this next time it won't take me a year and a half. Maybe this next time it'll only take me six months. Then I'll keep growing and then the next time I get knocked out, maybe it'll only knock me down for three months. Um, but I think to, to think that you're going to get to a place where, you know, I'm so strong that I, I can't get knocked down again is that's when you really get knocked down. <laughs> right. Yeah. The important thing to remember too is, you know, it's easy for, for anyone to go look at someone on social media. It's a highlight reel. Yeah. You have to remember that. I mean, even with us, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff. We're mm -hmm. very fortunate guys, yeah. but we've all dealt with some stuff. Oh, yeah. And, and the guy that you see on top is probably dealt with the most mm -hmm. because he's learned to deal with it a little better, a little better and a little better every yeah. time. So it doesn't keep him down as long. So don't be afraid to deal with the stuff. Don't be afraid when it happens to you that it's going to crush you or cripple mm -hmm. you. You know, it's, it's a, a stepping stone that's going to build, literally, it's a rep in the gym. It's going to build you up stronger. So when you see that guy on social media that you want to be the Gary V or whoever your, your influencer is, remember, he's gone through a lot of stuff to get there. His life wasn't perfect. I guarantee you nobody who's anywhere where you want to be has had it just given to them. It, it doesn't last, you know. What are you doing to protect yourself from the dark days or to equip yourself to get through any future dark days? I surround myself with, with people that can help me. When those fall upon me, you know, I've got people I can go to if mentally I'm in a bad spot that, that kind of know me well enough to know, hey, this is what you're doing. I like people that call me out on my stuff because uh, oftentimes it's, it's me that's doing it to myself. There's some self-sabotage. So I like keeping people around me that are comfortable enough with me to say, hey, it's you. The problem's not with anyone else, you know? And I think you, you realize yeah. that a lot too in your situation was a lot of times the problem's internal. Mm -hmm. It's easy to, to say it was something else, but a lot of times it's in you. What can I do different? What did I do wrong? Even when something happens to you, where did I do something wrong where I could have been better? Absolutely. Nice. Well, I had a, actually, I had two quick, I had two questions for Tyler on his story, but he 100% he answered one of them. I was going to go back and ask you, well, did you go all in? Were you really going all in? And you said no on the marriage. So he 100% answered, answered that one. Yeah. Uh, another one's not really a question, but, you know, I'm 
you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 100% dad right now. I've been in dad mode for a couple of years, like hard, because mm-hmm. I got kid. They're in that age where they can be a disaster. Or you can like flourish. He said something that I think a lot of a lot of parents, and especially people in my situation where parents are together, you're almost like in competition for your kids. You want to make sure everything's smooth. Tyler literally said he had never had anything bad happen. Sometimes you got to let that happen. Mm-hmm. If they're not going to go off a cliff and it's not going to derail them from life, let it go. Yep. Let it happen and help them deal with it. Don't shield it. Don't stop it. Let it happen. That's how we become equipped. Because if you notice when all our stories, that's what we're talking about. It has equipped us to deal with stuff going forward. Mm -hmm. He was more equipped, better equipped to be a good husband and now to be even a good father because it's happened. You're more equipped and you know more about being, both of you two about your health, physical, and and even the gratefulness of what has happened. It equipped, it's, it's, it's equipping you. That being said, and that's, you know, and that's one thing with my kids, they've had, you know, we had a little, little thing happen recently and it's equipment. Let Mm it, let it go. Like, you got to, they got to learn. They got to stick it out and they got to learn mm-hmm. from it. So then next time something bad happens, it's not so bad. Everything's bad the first time. I remember the first time I got a tattoo, I almost jumped out of the chair when the needle touched. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, time out. Is this what the yeah. whole thing is like? <laughs> now I get in the chair, I'm like, oh, whatever, dude. Uh, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's different because now I'm equipped. Mm-hmm. I've dealt with it. That being said, that's my answer to the question. My darkest days will always be behind me because of my perception my thoughts about life, the way my brain works now. I know I've got some, some rough patches coming. I can even tell, I can sit here and tell you five that I know are gonna happen at some point and I'm gonna have to deal with it. But it's not gonna be my darkest days because of this. My perception on life has been permanently changed. My thoughts about life are permanently changed because if you really get down to it, what makes something horrible? The way you see it. The way you deal with it, the way you perceive it, and the way you deal with it. I am mentally equipped to deal with it. Now, am I going to be sad at moments? Am I going to cry about some stuff? Yep. But it's never, never again will I let that happen to myself. Because I understand that there's a plan, there's an order, there's something going on, there's a lesson, there's a positive every time something like that happens, which we've all sit here and, and just confirmed. So once my perspective has changed, once you fix the top, everything else will fall into place. Yeah, well, and to expand on that, we're, everyone's so afraid of the struggle. The struggle is what breeds the greatness. You know, when I lived in Las Vegas, I would try to get to the office early sometimes so I could work. And two or three times, I passed at about 4.30 in the morning, Floyd Mayweather jogging with a team of cars beside him and, and you know, all this stuff. And I'm thinking, this guy's got millions. He's got uh, a perfect record. He's out here at 4.30 in the morning. No other guy's doing that. This man's not afraid of the struggle, and that's why he's great. And that made me remember, I need to let myself struggle, you know? Put yourself in uncomfortable situations. Embrace those dark days and be the light. Yeah, man. absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. This wasn't an episode to get your mood down. This was an episode to pull back the curtain and let you know that we're human too. We've had our dark days. We're just like you. If you're going through a struggle, be your own light. And the one thing I noticed that's similar to all of our stories, being alone. Being alone and having those thoughts with yourself and the responsibility, taking it upon yourself to get yourself out of your current situation. Be grateful. Being grateful is also a catalyst that a lot of these guys share. So when you're grateful, you absorb your aloneness and you take responsibility, you can then drive yourself out of your dark days and then go to the light that you deserve. Be a modern man, guys.